Hi everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to my January in and out. So if you have not seen one of these videos, this is a video in which I tell you everything I'm hauling for the month and everything I'm unhauling. So I really am trying to read off my shelves. You guys know this, I'm doing the unread shelf project. I'm really, really trying. However, this month is not helping me at all. Instead, what I have been doing with this unread shelf project is buying books that I want to read. So then that way I have the excuse to read them that they're on my shelves. Normally I don't feel the pressure to buy them until after I've read them if I really like them. But this month I'm hauling them so I can read them. So that kind of defeats the purpose. And in fact, I am like really intimidated to even film this video because all of those are haul books and I've got a stack here of unhaul books and it's just not pretty, you guys. It is not pretty. So I have got 15 books to unhaul here and then like 40 plus to haul. So let's just get into it. The first ones that I'm unhauling are The One Who Got Away series by Ronnie Lauren. So this is um, four books. The One Who Got Away is the first and that's the name of the series. I read this one just recently for the recommendation readathon because I have heard so many good things about this series and I just did not like it at all. So I, I expected this to be a series about a school shooting and that is not what this is about. This is a steamy romance that the reason that people know each other is because they were both involved in a school shooting, but we don't necessarily hear a whole lot about that. It's just present day, how it's impacting them and more so like their love life and their romance and the steam, and I just am not interested. My sister, I think, gave me all of these, and she said, if you don't like the first, probably just let the series go. So I have really bad FOMO, but I am letting these four go. These next two are both ones that um, were from my mystery unboxing. So if you didn't see it, I will link it up above and down below, but I got a mystery box of book club favorites from my local used bookstore, and it had five books in it. I was really excited about the first one, and then my my excitement like gradually died as that video went on, and so I have decided to unhaul two of the books, and the reason I'm unhauling these two is because I cannot get them um, on any other format, like ebook or audiobook or anything, and I'm not super interested in them anyway, and so I know I will just never pick them up. Um, so the first is The Kitchen God's Wife by Amy Tan. This one um, like sounds sort of interesting, but I have heard many people tell me that it's really like dense and kind of slow, and so I think I'm going to let this one go. Um, if I want to read some Amy Tan, I am kind of interested in the Joy Luck Club, so I maybe will find that on audio or ebook, and then um, maybe give this one a visit if I love that, but I don't need to have this copy. Next is Reservation Blues by Sherman Alexi. So this one, um, it just doesn't sound interesting to me. I can't get it any other way. I am going to let this go to somebody who may enjoy it more than me. Next is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. Now, before everybody lets in a collective gasp, um, the only reason I am unhauling this is because I have two copies. And so I am going to, um, unhaul this one because I don't need to. Next is When Lightning Strikes by Kristen Hanna. So um, this one is was written in 1994 and it just um, is a western which you can totally not tell from the cover at all and I just did not like it at all so um, I'm gonna let this one go. This may be like a collector somewhere. I don't know. I need to look into that but um, because this is like her second Old, like second oldest book that is still in publication. And so I don't know, maybe this is worth something. Next is I Want to Be Where the Normal People Are by Rachel Bloom. So I read this and I just didn't care for it, but I don't know who Rachel Bloom is. And so I didn't have any sort of like attraction or fondness to her. Um, and I think maybe if you did, it would be better. But this is just a memoir of kind of funny musings. Um, there's a lot of these type of books around. And like I, I like them more if I know the person. So I'm going to let this go to somebody who maybe knows who Rachel Bloom is. Next is The Love Season by Ellen Hildebrand. So this was one of my first reads of the year, and I really didn't like it, you guys. And I love Ellen Hildebrand, so um, maybe somebody else will like this one more. I'm really getting better about, like, I used to, if it was Ellen Hildebrand, I would keep it no matter if I liked it or not, because I like her as an author. I want to have all of her books. I'm getting way better about that. And if I don't like the book, doesn't matter who the author is, I will unhaul it. So this one's going to go. Next is The Parting by Beverly Lewis, and this is an Amish 
um, romance. It, I keep wanting to say it's YA, but it's not. It's just an Amish romance. It is the first in the Courtship of Nellie Fisher series, and it definitely is one that you um, probably should continue in the series if you want to know, and I just don't care enough, and so I'm not going to keep this first one. Next is Everybody Always by Bob Goff, and this is one that I read um, with Chris from Books and Jams, and Bob Goff is somebody that is, he's a Christian um, speaker, and author, I guess. And he is really fun to watch because he is just a big personality. He has got a lot of energy, a lot of things. And he is very, like lives this very extraordinary life and he has done crazy things. And, um, the reason I don't like this book is because he speaks in such hyperbole that it like makes him lose credibility. So he talks about things like he exaggerates things that, you know, he's exaggerating. And so then it's like with his stories, the point, are you like exaggerating that or is that actually true? And also he is just a very, 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 very privileged white man and does not really acknowledge that. Um, in his life, I'm sure he does. He does a lot for other people, but in this book, it got like very eye rolly. So I'm going to let this one go. Next is Saving Grace by Jane Green. Jane Green is another one that I really like, but this one just didn't do it for me. Next is Bridesmaids by Zara Stonely, and this is one that I think I bought in my like chiclet craze 10 years ago or whatever, and I have read so much better, did not like this one. And last is Ladies of the Lake, and this one I had tried to pick up multiple times, and I finally read it, and I didn't love it. So maybe I should have just DNF'd it a million times ago, but I read it. It's um, about like older people all in the lake, romances. Um, maybe some of you would like it, but it, it just wasn't for me. So those are the 15 that I'm unhauling. Now I'll go get the haul stack. Okay, so starting off the haul, these first three are all ones that I have gotten from Forever and Grand Central Publishing. And so thank you, thank you, thank you to these publishers. I cannot wait to read all three of these. So the first one is Reunited on Dragonfly Lane by Annie Rains. And this one is about a woman who um, this vet it convinces her to adopt this dog. He's got a broken leg. And so I think there's it's the romance between the vet and the woman. And I love vet romances. I read one probably 15 years ago, and I cannot think about what it was, but it was a series. It wasn't the anim Animal Magnetism series by Jill Chavez, but something similar that it was about vets, and so I've been like craving one that puts me in that same spot, and so I'm hoping this might be the one. I don't know. This is a really tiny mass market paperback. Like, it feels smaller than normal, but I am excited to read this. Next is Friends Like Us by Sarah McKenzie, and I'm really excited for... I'm really excited for this one too. I'm going to say that probably with every book, but it's because I am. I'm really excited. This is about a girl who, or a woman who has a cancer scare. And so then her and her best friend, um, Jill, I think is her best friend's name. I remember that because my best friend's name is also Jill. And um, so they decide to make like this anti-bucket list. And so they are doing things like having um, steamy flings. And like, I guess it's anti-bucket list because they're not going to die, maybe. I don't know, but um, this on the back, it says fans of Susan Mallory, Jill Shalvis, and Jenny Hale will love this charming beach read. So this all might wait till the summer, but I also am staring out the window at a cold, dreary, gray Kansas day. So it might be, might be read sooner than that. And then last is A Mother's Promise by Katie Alden. And this one is one that I'm reading for Historathon. So I hope to read this in February. This is about a woman in 1927. She is like a, a teen mom, maybe she's pregnant. And so they make her go to this like institution and then they try to take her baby um, because she is too young to have this baby. And so then she is fighting to get her baby back. And I just love books about a mother's love and like what moms will do for their kids. And so I have high hopes for this one. So this next stack is books that I received as gifts. So Brie, um, my good friend from Falling for Romance on Instagram, I will link her um, down below. She she sent me a message one day and said, hey, I have some duplicate copies of this handful of books. Do you want them? And I said, heck yes. So she sent me The Flip Side by James Bailey. 
And this one is about a guy who has like carefully planned out his life and yet his girlfriend broke up with him. He's like homeless, I think, living with his parents or something. And so he's like, okay, I'm just going to start flipping a coin. And so that's what he does. And this is his story and how it works out for him. It's his romance. And I just think this concept is so interesting. And hopefully it will like teach me some philosophical things because I am a planner and like to really like try to control things, but truthfully, everything is out of our control. And so I really um, hope this book does that well. Next is Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfure. And this is a female-female romance. Um, I think one of them, their brother's like trying to hook them up on blind dates and they keep going poorly. And so then um, it's like a, a Twitter astrologer or something and um, it's their romance. So I've heard great things and it, it'll be my first female-female um, romance. So I'm hoping I'll like it. It looks like it's set in Seattle and that sounds fun. Um, I can't wait to try it. The next four are all Christmas books that she sent me, and we know Brie loves her Christmas books, and so do I, and so I'm going to gladly put these on my shelf. So Jingle All the Way by Debbie McComber. I am so nervous for this one, you guys, because my sister read it and did not love it. I think Brie read it and did not love it. Um, I really just have not heard great things about this, but it's Debbie. It's Christmas. I, at least for FOMO's sake, have to know what's going on. Next is The Christmas Backup Plan by Lori Wilde, and this is one that was new this year, and I've heard such mixed things about this. I think it's a road trip romance, and I've heard people either love it or hate it, so again, FOMO, I want to know. Next is Mistletoe and Mr. Wright by Sarah Morgenthaler, and this, I think, is the second in her um, Moose Springs, Alaska or something series, and so I asked Sarah from The Bookish Knitter, because she loves this series, and she said, you do need to read them in order, so I'll need to find the first one, which is the tourist attraction, and then read this one, and I'm really curious, since Sarah loves it, if I will love it or not. I'm kind of guessing not, since Sarah and I tend to not have the same taste, but I want to try it. I've seen an interview with Sarah Morgan Thaler and she was a really nice, fun gal. So that really helps. And like, I automatically like I'm going into this thinking I'll like it. And then last from Brie is A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. And, um, I had, I didn't hear as many people reading this this year as I thought, but, um, sounds interesting. I love some Royal. I love some Christmas. This is set in New York. That's my favorite place to read Christmas books. So that's exciting. And then the last gift I received this month is from the wonderful Krista from Books and Jams. She sent me The Lazy Genius Way by Kendra Adachi. So this is a book. um, It says, embrace what matters and ditch what doesn't and get stuff done. And so her and I have chatted um, and she just knows like this is what I need 100%. Like I am so busy with stuff all the time, but am I really like paying attention to what matters? And that's something I think about all the time. So she sent me this because she knew it would help me and I need it and she was reading it and really liking it. So this one um, does not fit into my February TBR anywhere with all the readathons and things going on, but I am going to try. It is on my wall of things to read because I really, really want to read this and I feel like this has the power to um, definitely change an inspiration and mindset. So thank you to Brie and to Krista. I love these books. Okay, you guys, um, now comes the last part of the haul, and these are all books that I have bought. So um, a few reasons and things that I'm going to give as excuses right now. So first, um, I wanted to read and haul all of Brittany C. Cherry's backlist, and you'll find out why later in the month, but also I just love her so much that I really want to own all of her books. And so she was releasing these covers of her Element series. So we've got The Air He Breathes, The Fire Between High and Low, The Silent Waters, and the gravity of us. And so she was releasing these on Instagram. And so I saw them and I had to have them and they are all signed like, Oh, oh, so good. And so sweet. And they are signed like to me. And I just have never had like a personalized signed book and the price was great. I love supporting her and I just love these books and will like cherish them. So 
I have these four from that. But then I also had to buy these seven that I didn't have. You guys, I really only had like four of hers on my shelf because they are all on Kindle Unlimited. But I just decided now is the time. And so I bought all of her backlist. So we've got Loving Mr. Daniels, which I have read and loved. Southern Storms, which is the um, book club pick for the Book Sisters for February. So maybe you should check this one out. Um, then the Space in Between. This one is like a very old school cover. I love it. Next is Art and Soul. The Wreckage of Us. And then Landon and Shay, part one and two. So I now own all of Brittany C. Cherry's books. Eastern Lights, I wanted to pre-order it, but she said pre-order is not available. So I will be ordering that. That comes out the 17th, maybe of February. So um, I just am so thrilled to have this collection. I like, it was worth every penny. You guys know I very rarely buy new books. Very, very rarely. Um, and if I do, it's for authors that I love and want to support. And so there it goes. This next group, I am blaming Krista from Books and Jams because, not really, she invited me into some Facebook swap groups and they are so addicting. And like, I don't know what people were doing in January, but like everybody was doing a clean out of their shelves and there were so many books. And if you bundle and things, then they're cheaper. And so, of course, I did that. And so, let's just get started with those. So, the first one is The Marriage Pact by Michelle Richmond. And you guys, this one sounds so good. So this is about a couple that gets married and enters into this marriage pact, which is like, sounds almost like a little culty. It's this group of people all about like how to keep your marriage fresh and alive and safe and all that stuff. But you cannot mention the marriage pact. And one of them breaks that rule. And I don't know, this is a thriller. So I don't want to know much more. I'm so excited. Then we have Sale by James Patterson and Howard Rowan, maybe. And um, when I had said something about liking James Patterson, one of you guys said that the Guilty Wives Club or the Guilty Wives or something and Sale were your favorites. And so I saw this one and had to grab it because I want to know. I read Guilty Wives and I did enjoy it, so I'm excited to read Sale. Next is The Perfect Nanny um, by Layla Slamani. And this one is a nanny thriller, and I don't want to know any more than that. I love nanny thrillers. This one's super short. I plan to read it this month, and so um, I'm excited. Can I not say that any more times? Um, next is Someone Else's Love Story by Jocelyn Jackson. So um, Karen from Be Reading sent me Gods in Alabama, which is Jocelyn Jackson's debut, I think. And she said she thought I'd really like her. And I did like the writing style. And so this one I saw and I grabbed it. Um, this one I think is about a woman who has like a three-year-old or something. And she is at a gas station when it's held up. And this man comes between like a shooter and her three-year-old. And so she falls in love with that man. And I think it's the romance there, but there's like more to that story. So um, Karen said she is kind of like a Leanne Moriarty where she's a mix of like women's fiction and thriller. And this plot sounds like exactly that. And I am like so excited to read this. So I have got to come up with a new word too. It, you guys should make this into a drinking game every time I say I'm so excited. Next is Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McCrate. So I have read some other Kimberly McCrate and I'm kind of hit or miss on her. But this one is about a woman who is called from her um, daughter's school. And they say her daughter is in trouble for cheating. But they also she gets there and her daughter is dead. And supposedly she jumped from the roof, roof, but she gets a note saying she didn't jump. So I think she's trying to figure out what happened. And I don't know. I'm really feeling like I'm doing a good job. My One of my goals of 2021 was to read more thrillers. And so part of it, I guess, this year means hauling them to read them. But I'm definitely doing better in um, at least hauling thrillers. So hopefully I will get that goal met. Next is An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. And I think this is about a boy who has dated a whole bunch of Catherines and then he goes on a road trip. Um, I don't really know. This is a honor book for the Michael Prince Award. So I've heard a lot about this. Uh, John Green, I'm kind of hit or miss on him as well. Um, but this one sounded interesting enough. So I will try it. Next is The Overdue Life of Amy, um, Amy Byler. 
And I don't remember, like I've heard a lot about this book when it came out, which was a long time ago, I feel like. And I just love books about books. And so I feel like this one might fit that. Uh, fit that. And so I will give it a shot. I don't really know anything about it except for that. Next is The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. And this one is about um, a girl and a guy who are roommates. And I think he's in the sex industry, sex film industry. And um, I've heard like that this does really good things for that industry and just um, kind of normalizing it maybe. So I don't know. I, again, have like FOMO about this book. Uh, uh, speaking of FOMO, another book is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I had to have this when I saw it as a part of a swap because I haven't read this. Um, I know Eleanor Oliphant is on the spectrum and I think maybe Gail Honeyman is as well. I don't, I can't remember if it's on voices or not, but I, um, just love books like that, especially after reading, um, The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garbus Graves. So I'm really hoping this is a good one. I think Krista from Books and Jams also really likes that one, and I I trust her for the most part. <laughs> um, next is The Perfect Girl by Gilly Mc, Jilly Gilly McMillan. I um, don't know what this is about. This is a musical prodigy. She's 17, and I have read some um, of her before, and I like her, and she does thrillers, and so um, I'm really trying not to know a whole lot about this, and I'll give it a shot. I got another one by her um, called The Odd Child Out. This one is huge, and it's got deckled edges, and I hate that. And I wish I would have known that it was deckled pages because I probably wouldn't have gotten it, gotten it. But this one is the second in the Jim Clemo series, and the first one is What She Knew. And I read that, have that, read that, and I liked it. I gave it three and a half stars, so I figured this would be fun. Um, Jim Clemo, like it just follows him as a detective or whatever he is, and I liked him, so... I figured I'd give this one a shot. Next is The Stolen Marriage by Diane Chamberlain. And this one is another historical, so I might put this on my shelf. But you guys, this rain is textured, and I am loving it. Like, I'm just sitting here like this, so I'll move my hand so you can see it. But um, I didn't have to know anything about this because it's Diane Chamberlain. She is one of my all-time favorite authors, and so I grabbed this as well as The Silent Sister. And this one I don't think is is historical, so I definitely will not be reading it this month. But I like want to read it ASAP because she's another one that I would love to read her whole backlist. Next one is This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. I've heard all a lot about this this year. This is about two um, moms who are in the hospital like on New Year's Eve having their babies. And they, one wants to name it Quinn, but the other one has the baby first or whatever. And then these two, one's a boy, one's a girl. They keep meeting throughout life. And so um, I'm going to say this for next New Year's. But I, I, again, I know Krista from Books and Jams really liked this. But I've talked to other people who didn't. Um, like I feel, I feel like this is a very mixed bag. Um, the premise sounds like something I will love. So I'm excited to try it. Next is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. So you guys just saw I unhauled my duplicate copy. Well, I hauled this one. Um, both were part of a bundle. And so I had to, um, had to just take it. But this one, I don't know a whole lot about it, except that I've heard about everybody loving this book. And so I really want to read it. I think it's about like a schoolhouse or something. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything because I don't know anything about it. And that's how I want to go into this book is completely blind. Next, this one has been like one of my most sought after books and I couldn't get it anywhere, but Masterclass by Christina Dolcher. So this one is a dystopian book and I've heard so many good things about this. I think it was uh, the Girly Girl Bookworm as well as Kinder Loves Books. Both of them really like made me want to read this immediately. And so now I finally have it. And this green is so bright and pretty. Like I don't even know if the camera's doing it justice. It is so good. So um, I'm excited to read this one. You guys, I'm getting frustrated and annoyed with myself, but I cannot wait to read this one. Next is Big Summer by Jennifer Weiner. So Jennifer Weiner is another one of my favorite authors. Back, um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or whatever, I read all of her backlist and she's been kind of slow to publish. And so I haven't read her most recent ones. I kind of just fell off the wagon, but this one I've heard has good plus size rep. I don't really know. But regardless, I like her style a lot, and I would like to read more of her um, newer things, and so I've got this one. 
Next is The Lies That Bind by Emily Giffen. She is another one that I have read the majority of her backlist, and I love them all with the exception of a couple. And so um, this is her newest, and I haven't read it. I, I think my sister maybe didn't really like this, but I'm going to try it. Next is Ellen Hildebrand's Beautiful Day. So again, I told you I love Ellen Hildebrand. I'm not going to like write her off just because I didn't like the love season. So this one I think is about uh, two like families or couples that come together for a wedding on Nantucket. Almost all of her books are on Nantucket and they come together for this wedding. Um, the bride's mother is passed away and she left like instructions for the wedding. And so I think things just kind of go awry. There's some secrets, some drama. I am hoping this will be like classic. Ellen Hildebrand. So that is everything that I got from Facebook Marketplace. Now I've got two that were a shocking find. So we went to Menards. I don't know if you guys have Menards, but it's like a Home Depot, but it's got like home goods as well. Um, and so we went there because they were having a sale where everything you could put inside of a bag that they gave you was 15% off. So we went because like they have like batteries and um, different like house products that I use that are cheaper there. So we went to get those and I have I had to like browse through the book section and so I did. So I found I Owe You One by Sophie Kinsella. And this one, if you guys um, have been watching me for a while, you know I was like on a hunt to find whatever book Sarah from the Bookish Knitter gave five stars and said she loved it so much. I think it was at the beginning of last year and this was it. So I tried like Always the Last to Know by Kristen Higgins. It wasn't actually that. I tried the other Sophie Kinsella, her other new one. It wasn't that. It was this one. And so it was $5.97, you guys. And then it was 15% off of that. It's a hardcover in great condition minus that sticker. I like was so shocked I was able to find this. So um, I'm really, really excited and I want to read this because I think it maybe has to deal with death of a parent or something and I just know it was really important to Sarah and so I want to read it um, just to see what, what it's about. The other one that I got there was uh, Mrs. Everything by Jennifer Weiner. So I just told you that I love Jennifer Weiner. This one is a really skinny mass market kind of paperback, but it was also $5 um, and so I... I think I now own almost all of her backlist, and I want to read this one as well. These last three are the other three that came from that mystery unboxing. So um, I'm going to keep all of these and give them a try. I'm really only excited about one of them, but the other two I can find on ebook or audiobook, so I will read them. Um, also, this first one, Major Pettigrew's Last Stand. I have heard a couple of you um, say you read this and that it was good. It's a historical, I think think maybe I don't know about this like older man who his brother dies and then he meets this woman and they become friends and then the friends turned into more looks really sweet and potentially historical I need to look into that then we've got a thousand acres by Jane Smiley and I think part of the reason I'm not excited for this is just this cover it is very blech um, and I don't like like rural rural stories, and this is a very very rural story. Can you say that five times fast? My goodness! Um, but this is a King Lear retelling, and sounds like something I'll give a shot. And then this is the one that I actually like feel kind of excited about, and this is The Year of Fog by Michelle Richmond. Um, the marriage pack that I just hauled was also by Michelle Richmond, so this one's The Year of Fog, and all it says on it is, a child's disappearance is at the heart of this riveting read that follows photographer, fiance, and soon-to-be stepmother, Annie, Abby Mason. Once the drama starts, prepare to race to the last page, and that's by Hallmark Magazine, so I don't know. I have no idea what I'm in for with this one, but... I am excited to give it a shot. So those are all of the books that I hauled and unhauled. And you guys, I don't know about like motivation for this. Like, I don't know this unhaul project. Clearly, um, the project alone is not enough to motivate me to not buy books. But the fact that these videos are so long and so overwhelming, maybe next month I will like take a chill pill. I really have a set, set TBR for next month because I've got like, 25 or more books on my TBR. So I think I won't be as tempted, but that is it. So if you have read any of these books, let me know. March, I'm free as a bird. I don't have any commitments. So if you want to buddy read any of these, or if you know of any that I should prioritize, let me know. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you in the next one.